Hello, thank you so much for coming this way today. I have a word on my heart that I want to share. You know, there are times that the Lord will put a word on your heart and it will just be something that he wants to give you as a person. And that word is just for you. And so you need to pay attention to what the Lord is saying. Yeah, you might share it, but you... You, if he gives you uh, permission, but you just know that this is for you. Um, but there are also times that the Lord gives you a word and it's actually for someone there, you know, actually for someone. And um, so I believe that what I want to share here today is going to help somebody. Um, I'm not very sure how, but I just believe in my heart that this is going to be a help to someone. You see, we are living in very difficult times, difficult, very difficult times. Um, sometimes you need to, you might, unless you are close to some people, you might not know all that they are going through. You might not know. You just see people, faces shining, you know, clothes are ironed and everything. But sometimes you need to get very close to hear the other side of the story to really know all that they are going through. But, you know, we just do our best to, you know, to see that people are, have the word of the Lord, have the mind of God, because what, what we're experiencing is one thing, but then the word of the Lord is another thing. And the truth is that we also take our time to pray for all who, um, all that we, we are reaching out to, you know, trusting that, the Lord will keep them in his good hands, that he will keep them safe, he will keep them blessed, he will also keep them fresh, you know, in, in the spirit. So um, in meditating or thinking about the times in which we live, um, the Lord has put something on my heart to share on how to survive and thrive in hard times, how to survive and thrive in hard times how to survive and thrive in hard times now i'm going to be speaking from god's word and um, and i trust that this word will be meaningful to someone it will be a blessing to someone um, i'm going to be sharing eight things that are important eight things that we need to do or eight things we need to you know, both what we need to do and what we need to avoid as we as we navigate through the season that we are in at this time. Now, I'm going to begin with three things that, you know, you shouldn't do in hard times. Three things you shouldn't do. The first is um, do not doubt the love of God. Don't doubt the love of God. That's the first temptation. Satan, once situation is adverse, the enemy will want to say, if God loves you, why will he allow you to go through this? If God really cares for you, why will he permit this to happen to you? If God is really interested in you, if God really answers prayers, why didn't he, why is he not answering your prayers? Why? So the, that's the first thing the enemy wants to do. He wants to, you know, set you against God or set your heart against God to make you believe that God doesn't really care. God doesn't care about you. God doesn't love you. God really is not interested in you. You might just be wasting your time, you know, thinking that you're serving him. God is, is interested in many other things than just to think about you. So he does that, you know, to shake uh, your faith. So once we come into adverse situations, the devil tries to take advantage of it, you know, to shake people's faith. So sometimes people are tempted to draw back, to draw back, to draw back. You know, when the children of Israel faced hardship in the wilderness, they said, it's better. You, God brought us out here to kill us. It's better for us to go back to Egypt. We wish we had died. You know, so when we come into difficult times, the first thing the enemy does to do is to push us to begin to doubt the love of God. So in times like this, we must not doubt the love of God. Um, the presence of God or the love of God has very little to do with, oh, what we have. That we don't, that things are difficult does not mean God loves us. 
And that things are not difficult does not mean God loves us more than others. It doesn't mean that. So we just know it that God loves us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, um, that whoever believes should not perish but have everlasting life. If God loves us enough to give his son, then there is no reason we should doubt his love. Now, the second thing that I'd like to uh, say that we should not give room to is do not give room to depression. You know, when depression comes in, when depression comes in, you know, yes, and that's the result of concentrating on the negative side of what is happening, you know, and we get depressed, joy goes away. And when joy goes away, peace goes away, fear comes in. And um, the next thing might just be to begin to look for, you know, look for frantic ways, you know, to find happiness. You know, do things that make you temporarily forget what you're going through. That's why some people will go into alcohol, they go into all kinds of addiction, go into all kinds of, you know, things. Just, and when you talk to them, you say, look, look, there's just too much trouble. I just want to, I just want to forget. I just want to have some peace. I just want to, it's not that I like what I'm doing, but I just, I just want to be able to, you know, free my mind from certain things. And so why they are either drinking or doing this or do it's just like they go into a temporary deny. It looks like there's no problem. I don't have a problem. And then it looks like everything is okay. Don't go into all that. Don't look for denial. Get into things that promise to help you to temporarily forget. You know, the Bible talk, Proverbs talks about giving strong drink to those who are in trouble so they can forget their pain and all that. But the thing is that even if you forget the pain for an hour or two, when you come back to yourself, the pain is still there. So that's not a solution to the problem. It's not a solution to hardship. So hardship can really drive people into addiction. They start just looking for things to do to find happiness and then... In that way, they get enslaved, and then that becomes another problem. And the third thing that I want to, you know, uh, rec- uh, say that we need to avoid when things are hard is to begin to look for alternative ways, alternatives to right righteousness, alternatives to doing things the right way, because it will look like well. You remember the, the psalmist in Psalm 73, he said, My feet had almost slip, slipped when I focused on the prosperity of the wicked. When I thought about how things were working for the wicked, and uh, here am I trying to live for God, trying to do my best, and things aren't working the way they ought to work. I just said to myself, What's the use? What's, what's all this about? Why am, I having, why am I bothering myself trying to clean my hands and trying to clean up my life? What's, what's the use in serving God? There's no need because I'm not getting, I don't have anything to show for it. So why trouble myself? So in difficult times, many people, some can just, you know, begin to look for alternative ways to make things to work that is not really right. In today's world, you, you 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 get close to some people and ask them, "What's going on? Why are you doing this?" Say, "My brother, things are hard. My sister, you don't understand. These are things are hard. It's not that I like what is going on, but what am I going to do? I just have to do it. You do it. You ask God for forgiveness. So what is it? You know, I know what I'm doing is not right, but we have to survive. Mm-mm. You don't. You're not going to survive by doing the wrong things." That's what the enemy does when, when we are afraid and we are panicking because things are not going well. The enemy is in a hurry to suggest alternatives that will lead you away from God, lead you from the right way. Uh, you know, the Bible says there's a road, that's, there's a, a, a way that seems right unto a man, but the end of it is ends in death. The end of that road is death. So it's not about following the road that seems right. It's about going the road that is right. Now, having mentioned these three things that I think we need to avoid when things are difficult and we're thinking about how to survive or how to thrive, we 
need to um there are five other things i would like to suggest so let's take this to her so resist the temptation to do the wrong thing because things are hard you know some will go into stealing some will go into cheating some will go into all kinds of things you know just push themselves into different things because i mean i have to survive i have to survive don't don't do a wrong thing because you want to survive don't deliberately go into evil because you are looking for a way to survive and thrive now having talked about um, these three things that we shouldn't do the the next thing that i want to talk about the the the, the fourth thing oh yeah the fourth thing is really this and i'm going to be talking about you know five things really uh, the first thing I want you to do in these five things you should do is to seek divine direction. When things are hard, the temptation is to run away from God. But running away from God doesn't make anything better. It only complicates the problem. It only makes things harder. So instead of running from, away from God, the thing to do is to seek God. Lord, What's going on? Lord, what would you have us to do at a time like this? What do you want us to do? In first, second Samuel chapter 21, yeah, I think, yeah, second Samuel chapter 21, there was famine in Israel and it lasted three years. The Bible said that David sought the Lord. David consulted God. He sought God. And the Lord told him the reason for the famine. And um, he received wisdom what needs to happen. He received wisdom what needs to happen. So, and that's how the famine went away. When things are difficult, the best thing to do is to seek God, seek direction. And because heaven knows what is happening. God knows what is going, through, you know, what is going on. God knows what you're going through. There is nothing you need to explain to him. He's all about saying, Lord, you know I am here. And I know you know that I am here. And I know you know all that I'm supposed to be doing. I know you know everything. I can't explain anything to you, Lord. I just ask that you show me the way to go. Lord, help me. Give me direction. Let me know what you would have me to do. You know, in Genesis chapter 26, Isaac came into a land and there was famine and the Lord told him, don't go to Egypt, stay here, stay in this land. And he stayed and God prospered him. So it's a time to seek um, divine direction. Don't stay with the news, just the news. Today you listen, oh, disaster is happening. Oh, the other one is happening. Oh, the other one, people have died here. Oh, people are dying there. People have injured there. Earthquake there, war there. You know, different things are happening. Don't stay with the news. I'm not talking about not listening to the news, but don't stay with it. Don't soak it in. Soak in the word of God and not just the news. Hear the news, but soak in the word of God. So soak in the word of God and um, we trust God. God. Uh, so when you seek God, in the book of Haggai, the people were having problems and the prophets began to seek God and God told them exactly what was wrong. Said, These people said that the time to seek to build the house of God has not come. That's why they're going through problems. You know, they would have been trying other things. So what are we supposed to do now? God said, get into the forest and get wood and build my house and I will bless you. That's all. We thought it was something else. And as soon as they returned to do the work of the Lord, the prosperity returned. So it's important to see God once we see that hard times have come so that God can show us the way that he would have us to go. It's by seeking God that God will show Moses how to give the people water in the wilderness and what to do to provide manna for them. All those happened as a result of seeking God in Hard time. So if you seek God in a difficult time, God will do something. And you know, why do we need to seek God? Yeah, because we believe in miracles. That's the that's the fifth thing I'd like to mention. Believe in miracles. Believe that God can intervene. Yeah, God can intervene. God can do miracles. 
You know, God can God can step in to do what man cannot do. In a time of famine, Isaac sowed in the land and he reaped a hundredfold in the same year. That's a miracle. That's God doing something. How do you have water? You know, when God says, I will give streams in the desert, I will make rivers in the wilderness, that's a miracle. When he says, I will do a new thing, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. So God has a way of sustaining people even in difficult times. The Bible says he raises the poor out of the dust and he lifts up the beggar from the dunghill, from, from the ash heap. So God is... We believe in miracles. That's why the Bible is full of, you know, stories of miracles, turning water into wine, you know, giving, paying the debts of, um, of, of a widow, you know, giving child to the barren, different things. So believe in miracle, believe it. And in times, in difficult times, expect God to do some miracles as we trust him. When you've done all that you know to do and nothing else to do, Wait on God and expect God to do a miracle. And God does not fail. He doesn't fail. He won't. He's not going to fail because of anybody. God will not fail. <laughs> you know, when the three Hebrew uh, young men in the book of Daniel chapter 3 said to Nebuchadnezzar, O King Nebuchadnezzar, we are not afraid. I mean, we do, we're not we're not worried about this situation. If you have made up your mind to throw us into fire, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us and he will deliver us. He will deliver you out of a fiery furnace. Yes, he will deliver. That's what they said. They didn't say he may deliver. They said, say, or he may not deliver. That's not it. They said, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us and he will. Not he may, not he may not, not even if he doesn't. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us and he will, meaning that they believed in miracles. Our faith is about miracles from the beginning. Virgin conception is a miracle. It's a miracle. Salvation is a miracle. Everything about Christianity, everything about the faith, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is a miracle. The resurrection of Jesus is a miracle. So we have a faith that is built on the power of God to alter circumstances, you know, to do his will. So we believe in miracles. So believe in miracle in difficult times. Not to say, hey, well, who is going to help me? Will God help me from hell? Will he throw down money from hell? Will he do this from hell? Will he do that? However God does it, it's not your But believe in a miracle in God who is able to raise the dead and walk miracles. Not that miracles happen every day, but we know that God does miracles. We've seen God do miracles, miracles of protection, miracles of preservation, miracles of provision. God does miracles. So believe in it and expect it that in difficult times when there is, when you don't know what to do, God knows what to do. He knows what miracle to walk to get things to happen. He knows exactly what to do. God is a miracle walk. Walker, and then the, the the sixth thing that I want to recommend is that it's important to be part of a a practical a supportive group. In difficult times, don't be a lone ranger. Don't just stay all by yourself. Don't stay all by yourself. Be part of a supportive group. Have a company of people that you pray with, you fellowship with, you talk with, where you draw encouragement. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron, and so a man sharp, you know, a man the countenance of his friend. So we need company. In the in the early church in Acts of Apostles chapter 4, when after they leave, the, the authorities have beaten the apostles. The Bible said they will return to their own company and told them everything. Even if it's just a company that upholds you in prayer, that encourages you, but it's important that we are part of a supportive company in hard times. Don't be by yourself alone. Be part of a supportive company, a practical supportive company. Now, the seventh thing is um, to be compassionate. Be compassionate. Yeah, be compassionate. I'm going through a problem myself. Why right? be compassionate? No. You see, compassion is not about whether you're going through problems or not. 
Compassion is the nature of God. And every child of God needs to stir up balls of compassion. Now, let me remind you that Joseph was in prison with, you know, two other people, servants of Pharaoh. They were all together in the prison. <laughs> but he came out one day and saw their faces not looking very <laughs> happy and asked them, why are you so sad? Now, that sounds like a stupid question. You seeing people in prison, you know, people who, who should be with their families and they're in prison and you're asking them, why are you so sad today? Why shouldn't they be sad? <laughs> That's the question they should have asked him. Why shouldn't we be sad? But, see, but you see, Joseph demonstrated compassion that he thought about them. So part of what destroys people in hard times is that we are, we, we are so preoccupied with ourselves, with our own pain, with our own woes, with our own miseries that we have no time for others. But you see, when you open up, when you, when you open the doors of compassion in your heart, then a miracle can happen. You can never tell what will come out of you. When the Bible says that Jesus saw the people and he had compassion on them, that's where the miracles came from. That's what the miracle, that's how he was able to feed thousands with just a little provision. Not that he had, he, he had so much, it was compassion. So once we become compassionate, the God whose nature is compassion, you know, is like he releases something through you. So Joseph did not know what that could do. Just being compassionate, looking at somebody says, Neighbor, Neighbor, how, is, how are you doing? My colleague, what's going on? What's happening in your life? How are you? Can we pray together? Can we do that? Can we do the other one? You never can tell what will come out of that. Just unlocking, you know, the balls of compassion. That's what we need in difficult times to be able to say, Hey, reach out to others. Very, very important. Reach out to others, show compassion to others. You know, in very difficult times, how to that's how to survive as, as part of God's you know will to help us to survive. Now, it doesn't mean that you have, it doesn't mean that you are rich, but it just means that you have a heart that cares for people. So we need to care. And of course, if we have also, it's also a good time to you know show care. In Acts of Apostles chapter 11, Paul uh, Agabus gave a prophecy that famine was coming and it would touch every part of the world. As soon as he gave that prophet, prophecy, the church at Antioch made provision to send help and relief to people at Jerusalem. That's compassion. So when things are difficult, then you know we should trust God to be able to care for one another because the truth is God does not come down from heaven to do anything. He walks through us. So we can become channels of his love. We can become channels of his, you know, his care, um, channels of his grace in difficult times. So that's what he expects us to do. So hard times is a time to show compassion to others. And um, the eighth thing I want to say is like, um, out of compassion, the eighth thing is, what can I do to make life easier? If I have the power, what can I do? What can I do? You know, I want to be a contributor. I want to, I want to be a solution provider. I want to be a helper. You know, in a time when everybody is complaining, this is not there, this is not there, this is not there, the other one is not there, it's just about what is not there, what is missing, and all that, someone gets up and said, um, can I be... Um, a solution to this problem. It's just like saying, um, everybody's saying there's no money, there's no money. Okay, can I become a seller of something? Yeah, I mean, because people are looking for something. So what can I contribute? What can I give to uh, fellow humans in, time, in this time of, of scarcity? Where can I stand in the gap? What can I do? You know, in the real sense, selling is not just about making money. Selling is about identifying a need and providing a solution and then maybe asking people to pay a little for, for it or just whatever for it. But you identify a need and you're providing a solution 
and then you know people are paying for you know returning money for the value they get from what you are giving so it's a time to think about what can i do to bridge the gap what can i do to offer a solution we're in a time when there is no salt for example there is no salt everyone says there is no salt there is no salt there is no salt there is no salt who can bridge the gap and uh, you know find salt or find something you know something like salt for us you know something like that so is it time to go to god and say lord help me many people are suffering many people are in pains many people are going through difficulties how can you use me to bring a solution to this situation everybody is thirsty and Moses had to bring out what I pray that in difficult times the Lord will use you to bring a solution to your world that is in need. That everybody is not just crying, and God will use you, use your hands, use your brain, use everything you have to offer a solution and wipe away the tears of humanity around you. This is what the Lord has put on my heart to share with you at this time, and I pray. I desire and pray that this is a blessing to you and that God will use it uh, uh, you know, for, in the life of somebody uh, as we navigate through these difficult times. God bless you. Till we meet again.